Thank you for staying with us. It's time to see what the national dailies are saying this morning and taking all the stories, making headlines. Um, joining us to review this is Ezekiel Nya Etok. He's a public affairs analyst and is joining us from Akwa Ibom State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Incidentally, I'm from Abuja. Oh, you're from Abuja today. Oh, fantastic. How is the seat of power? Um, we hope for the best. Okay, okay. Anyways, I want to first say congratulations to you. I mean, all Nigerians are celebrating right now because yeah. the Super Eagles won their match against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. The boys, the boys, the boys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what Bafana Bafana is. You know, it's, it's a story we can never tell enough because mm -hmm. um, long ago, um, South Africa flogged us at the Grammys and then um, mm -hmm. to give us 2 0 with football. Have a, mm -hmm. We would have lost all bragging rights to South Africa <laughs> in Africa, you know, but yeah, we know they carry last. So we made that the thing. And let me tell you what, deliberate, so we would have just given them 7 0. Mm. We wanted to just, you know, play with them. Ah, you know, you're not nice. Because, you know, wait now, you know, when the, the penalty kicks that time, they wanted to show that uh, they were good at it. We needed to bring it to that point, to, to rub it in, that we're not only going to beat them, that we'll beat them at penalties. Wow. And we loved them. Uh -huh. I loved them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, that is that is amazing. I'm glad we're, we're here this, at this yes. moment. You yeah. know, so. and we cannot wait to see what the finals will be like on Sunday. Yeah. But yes, I mean... The, the finals is going to be um, a little emotional in the sense that um, I, we know we're going to beat them, but you know, because they are the hosts, there'll be a lot of crying mm -hmm. and all that. <laughs> so we are going to see how we are going to manage the Manage the situation. Yeah. <laughs> mm, there's a little bit of, you know, human kind, milk of human kindness. Mm. We may just beat them, but allow them to lift the cup and give it to us. <laughs> 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 okay, let's go to our uh, papers this morning. Well, the first one we're looking at is Daily Trust. And it's amazing to know that the picture on this one is um, the Super Eagles. And there is a writer here or a small headline that says Nigeria beats South Africa to set up AFCON final with Cote d'Ivoire. And I think that's just what we just um, spoke about now. But let's move over to another matter. And there's a small headline on top that says Forex crisis. Nothing for Nigeria as our crude oil sold in advance. And this is by the NGF. So our crude oil has been sold in advance. So nothing for us at the moment. So even if we're selling right now, it's possible that we're not getting any revenue in. What's, what's your thoughts on this one? You, you know, um, I've said this before and I say it again. Our understanding of government and governance is so warped that unless we change those things fundamentally, we will not make progress. Nigerians need to occupy the office of the citizen and ask questions. We must be given very decisive and very definite answers because the, the opacity that, that surrounds or shrouds our governance system is not okay. We do not know how many barrels of oil that we produce per day. We do not know the contracts, the forward contracts that we have entered on our crude, where people have already forward sold our crude and collected money. Those things and how they deployed such funds, we have no knowledge of. So right now we are thinking in terms of um, that we are going to, can you, can, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay, good, good. You know, we are thinking in terms of, you know, let us ramp up our production or we are trying to multiply our production by the, you know, the rate of um, sales and not knowing that the production is the effective figure is what remains after you have deducted what you had already forward sold. Let me use that expression. And then we don't know how much. So at the end of the day, all our economic indices and analysis, our data are just blind data because they are not based on the realities on ground. I think the time has come when this government must sit up and do things right. And they may not be able to do it. Government runs on what they call lines of least resistance. 
What that means is that, you know, I was surprised when I was a vice chairman for the National um, Housing Policy Review. And what was written in that review was the cries of the people woke up government. That, 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 that phrase was there, woke up government, which means without the cries of the people, they wouldn't have done anything, they would have continued. So the time has come when we occupying the office of the citizen must make certain demands. It is our right to know. These guys are elected by us to get into the office and hold in trust on our behalf. We are the stakeholders. And we cannot be the people that don't have privileged information. You, what you call security information is not what we are talking about now. No, 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 no. There's nothing security about the fact that Nigerians ought to know that as of today, we are producing maybe 1.8 million barrels per day. Incidentally, we had already seeded 1 million barrels based on certain contracts and obligations we have. So we have effectively 800,000 barrels per day. Please, that figure is speculative. I'm, I'm saying, for instance, you know, so that nobody quotes that. No, we are now going to ask ourselves, how can we ramp up from 800? Because whatever the figure you have is minus 1 million, minus 1 million. Nigerians ought to know that. Then we will now be able to ask a people collectively, know that we are in an emergency. We'll even help to guide and track you know, those who are selling the, uh, stealing the crude to the end that we get something better. So I think that that's um, the situation. It comes first from our knowing exactly what the true situation is, knowing the emergency on ground, knowing what to have as expectations. On the basis of that, we'll also know what we should also do as citizens, because it's going to be a two-part game, the government and the citizens. Mm. Go ahead. OK. Well, I have a problem with the fact that you know we don't even know what we're producing. I have a problem with the fact that um, NMPCL, well, the World Bank has said that NMPCL is not even transparent um, with the funds that come in the revenue or whatever they get. Um, I think it's at this point that we expect a lot more from our government. I think it's at this point that we expect some form of transparency because you cannot expect them to trust you when you're not transparent. And so I, I would say that I agree with you on a lot of fronts. Um, but anyways, let's move over to something else, which is security matters. And um, the major headline on the Daily Trust this morning says, bandits threaten to marry bride, sell, sell 62 wedding guests, and they demand 100 million naira ransom. So we've spoken about security a lot of times here, and we're seeing this grow almost on a daily basis, where people are getting kidnapped, um, people are being killed. And um, I just want to know what your take on this is because I'm sure it's a song that has been sung for yeah. so long. You know, two things. If you see a child boldly challenging you, mm. look well, the father is somewhere. Right. If you see a child boldly challenging you, you don't need to look far. The father is somewhere. And this is a child that ordinarily, I mean, I mean, what would give him the audacity, the mendacity, the animal boldness, the effrontery to even talk to you like, hey, come now, come now. It's because look well, just look well, you see the father. Then you turn and say, oh, OK, don't worry, next time. The question we must ask ourselves is exactly what emboldens these terrorists against a nation like Nigeria. We are not, with all due respect, Chad or Niger or, we are called the giant of Africa. That's right. We are called the father of the black world, globally. We are told that one in every four black men in the whole world is a Nigerian. What will give the terrorists that effrontery, that audacity, to challenge us as a nation, who is their father and where is he? Mm. See, our, our president, you know, I'd made up my mind, like I said, to give 100% that I can to, to defend this country, to support the president, 
But you see, my support is not psychophantic. If, if you have a child, the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. If you have a child that, you know, my mother used to say something. And, you know, initially I was like, what's she saying? In Greek, what it says is, I'll say it in Greek, and then it says, that's Greek. Now, if you don't understand that, you know, <laughs> Greek, you don't understand. That's Greek. But let me <laughs> translate it. The child that has nothing to fear never amounts to anything. Mm. That means is that we need to let Mr. President know that even we, that are his supporters, there are lines we will not cross. Mm. Why am I saying this? The president. If today the president says, if I perish, I perish, to hell with 2027, who knows if I will even live till that, let me have today and for the sake of my generations unborn, put my name on the sands of time and make history as that man that was willing to lay down his life to rescue this country, one, two, three policies can bring us back to life. Number one, very simple. I said this before and I repeat it today. I wanted to be a governor of Akwaibom State, as peaceful as we are. Akwaibom has 200, 329 words or 368, depending on which one you want to use. I mapped Akwaibom into 500 concentric circles, each of them to be covered by five drones. If you have 500 times five, it gives you 2,500, okay? Uh, it gives you 25,000. Now, what is 25,000 that I cannot manage very effectively? Nigeria has 774 local governments. Why don't I map each of these local governments into 20 drone centers? And if you multiply that, it gives you about maybe about 70,000 and make it 100,000. Engage our young people. And there's nothing that happens in any part of Nigeria that I do not see real time in less than five minutes. Instead of the police saying, oh, they called us, we're running here. Then we discovered it was at the wrong place. We now ran there. We discovered it was the wrong place. That excuse can be eliminated completely by mapping Nigeria into drone centers where you have our young people, you train them, you have situation rooms, and when there's a phone call, all you need is to activate that drone center and then they give you within just the knowledge of what I've just said that is going to be done. The, the, the terrorists will have a meeting and say, bro, say, it'd be like, say, this game is over. But instead, they are talking of challenging terror. No problem. Let it be whatever terrain. They will just give you a call and say, my guy, check your phone or check your phone. And they see you, they carry people, they go. Do you understand me? They tracking where you are going. The police is not following you. They are just tracking by drones where you are going. And how many drones are you going to shoot down? Unless, of course, you give out the intel because you don't know where these people are. It's something that is so simple and yet so effective and yet so much within the cost. This is not going to all these things I'm saying will buy will have less than cost of one of those um, you know, um, Tokano jets that we're going to buy. But do you know why they may not win? Nigerians like big contracts, people in government. Mm -hmm. And this insecurity is big business for some people. Please, I want a Nigerian to come on air and challenge that what I've just said is not practical or doesn't make sense. Oh, well, um, I, <clears throat> when criminals become criminals, they should be called criminals. Uh, EFCC came up the other day and said uh, it's a religious sect that has been siphoning money and, um, and uh, giving to terrorists and all that. They shouldn't ju just call them religious sects. Because I'm not sure there's a religious sect, sect that uh, 
uh, teaches their people to be criminals. Mm -hmm. So if they are criminals, just call them criminals and leave out the sentiments and all that. Mm -hmm. And they will come and tell us that they have so many names. If they, if they cough, this Nigeria mm -hmm. will burn and all that. Mm -hmm. Let them start telling us they what should. these names are. Well, you just tell let us. Me, let me ask for the let me ask time. Yes. They say they have a list and they are not telling us this list. Anyway, five yeah, months. Let ask, let's, let's move which on. Part, which part of our constitution gives immunity to religious sects? You know, I'm an architect, maybe I don't know this. Call them what you may, but please tell me why you have not persecuted those people. Right. Tell me why your hands are tied. Tell me where you're coming on national television to tell me how helpless you are. You've just said it before. They tell me they have the list mm -hmm. of these people. And yet they do nothing about it. You know, these protests that are starting all over, it's an evil wind that will blow no man no good. And the earlier we stop it, let me tell you something about protest. Protest starts from people who, are, who mean well, who are really unhappy, who are very upset, who want to make their voices heard. But then there is a group of Nigerians who every day they pass by this shop and come to ask how much for a tin of milk. They realize that the thing is not within their, their, their reach anymore. And they are dying of hunger. They are working hard. They are not lazy youths. They are giving their very best. Their best cannot give them a square meal a day. And then there is a protest. Naturally, human instinct is about self-preservation. Mm. So without meaning any ill, so to speak, they say, well, oh maybe we use this chance, call it this milk a drink. Oh. So what happens? it now becomes where shops of honest Nigerians are getting looted. What do you do? You stop it from happening. How do you stop it? Mr. President has to have an emergency meeting with wise men. Look for wise men who will give you wise counsel and within hours, so to speak, make a national broadcast and say one, two, three things. You know, I think it was Winston Churchill that says that hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul. If Nigerians can see the light at the end of the tunnel, if they can see hope in what you are trying to bring, Nigerians are the most patient people on earth. Incidentally, today, Mr. President is starting a new project, you know, of delivering houses to Nigerians. And I'm privileged to be in that system. And the commissioning is today. Now, we had to sit down and ask ourselves, some of us, General Reese is our chairman, we had to ask ourselves, are we in for another writing report? Or are we in for another, after Shagari housing, they will now say Tinuku housing, where Nigerians can see houses being delivered. If we take that on housing, then healthcare professionals also get together and give a package on healthcare. Security consultants also get together, give a package on security. And these things are unleashed. As of today, this is my program on housing. And this is what we are going to do immediately. I will come later and give you what we are doing, sectoral, you know, imprints that we are doing because enough is enough. We've got to fix Nigeria together. That hope alone, animated by what they can see, and sincerity of purpose, can be the beginning of turning Nigeria around for good. Okay, well, let's move to the Guardian newspaper. Court orders federal government to fix prices, inflation as agitation heightens. Uh, that is on uh, page six of the Guardian newspaper. Uh, what's your take? Falano took the federal government to court and uh, mentioned some items that need uh, their prices fixed. And uh, he, he, he quoted the relevant sections in the Price Control Board or Act and all that. So this is where we are. Federal government needed to be taken to court to realize they need to fix some prices so that people can survive. You see, um, I'll tell you something. If you make 
a hundred thousand naira. I do not disclose that amount to your wife, depending on the woman, and depending on how you have been over the past years. As you mean, you've been stingy, you've been greedy, you've been very, very inconsiderate, and then you now change and say, I want to be a good husband. So you made a hundred thousand, you came back to the house and gave your wife 20,000 without her knowing the details. This woman says, ha, for this man to give me 20,000, he must have nothing less than 5 million. <laughs> and as a result, she does not appreciate it. And she's like, why, why not this? But if you have been transparent and honest with her, and she knows that 100,000 has come, and you give her 20, she will now likely tell you that, you know, there's school fees, you know, there's this. So this housekeeping, let me take 10. Let's see how we can manage it. That comes because she is informed on your finances. As at today, Nigeria has a need of 100,000 naira. But the resources available to Nigeria is only 20,000 naira. The need level is 100,000, but the funds available is 20,000. So the needs of Nigeria cannot be met. But because government has been very opaque, government has not been transparent, we are expecting teachers want salary increase. Understandably, workers want salary increase. Understandably, we want petroleum, uh, whatever, restored, you know, subsidy restored. We say NEPA bill is too high, uh, PHCN bill is too high. We have to subsidize. If you bring all the subsidies together and increases, it will come to 200,000, whereas we have 20,000. So, what am I trying to say? This that our brother, uh, our guy, Falana, has gone to um, make make the price control justiciable is good but the question is from where i'll give you two illustrations or maybe just one i'm an architect i have an estate i went to the bank borrowed money by pleading you know <laughs> my right arm and a part of my brain <laughs> to get that money and I build the houses. The prices are going up. Cement started from less than 300 when I started the estate, and now it's at 7,000. Now, the people that I initially sold, if not that God gave me the wisdom, initially sold the houses to. Imagine somebody that I sold the house to for 7 million, and today the delivery cost of that particular house is 20 million. I'd already collected 50%. I had signed a contract with the person. So it's also pay me the balance of 3.5 million. Mm -hmm. He cannot build that house. They have a contract with the man. So the question is, you now want to come and control how much I should sell the rest of the houses for. Will you also come and take up the loan that I took from the bank and say, I take the loan, I take the assets, I control, and I give my people. You can't do that because that's another property subsidy. You don't have the money. So the issue is the intention is right, but the resources are just not available. So it's not going to be just a sheer bull. It's not going to work. It's going to be an exercise in futility. Great exercise. But the question is, how do we come to appreciate these fundamentals and attract or attack the issue from first principles? Why is our economy the way it is? Why do we have foreign exchange problem? What can we do? One of the things that we can do is to just go local. How can we go local when our National Assembly is buying Prado and yet there's Hiroshima? How can we go local when all our government people are going abroad for treatment and yet we are dying here at home? How can we go local when all our schools at home you can't you can tell when your child get you can't even tell when your child gets into school because there are some people that had admission but because of strike it's been deferred and deferred and when they eventually enter the school you don't know when they will be leaving the school so you patronize foreign schools 
How can we do this except, let me end on this. My pastor is um, Pastor Obi Ekwenme, and the father was a former vice president of Nigeria. When the man, the father was made a, a vice president, who was an extremely comfortable Nigerian. I mean, everybody knew, as an architect, we knew about Equipment Associates. I mean, that he was doing well. well. You know what he did? He said, I cannot be a vice president and my children are schooling abroad. He recalled their children, his children, to come back to Nigeria. And the children were like, I don't believe this. What sort of man is this? Okay, just tell him, you you government money, which you have, pay up front. And let me say, no, I, I need to lead by example. So he brought the children back to Nigeria and they school here in Nigeria. That pastor, Ikweme, that's my pastor, he was in Nigeria, he schooled here in Nigeria, and he's his first son. He schooled here in Nigeria with the father as the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The reverse is the case. Today, even local government chairmen, their families are abroad. You're going Not to, to talk of N U R T boss. <laughs> N U R T boss. Um, what's his name again? Oh, Oluwamo. Oh, MC Oluwamo. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Families abroad. So why can't why can't we have to start to have the equipment back to Nigeria? And Tinubu, my 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 president, can show example. Can show example. Last time I said here move from region to region be the nigeria president and show us that you are passionate about nigeria you love nigeria you care about nigeria and your whole blood is nigeria by so doing you would have started to sow the seed of patriotism in and nationalism not through legislation but by example and role modeling yeah well he's somebody to find this is not possible I, I don't know how that example will come he just came back from a private trip two weeks to france mm -hmm. with uh, air force one of nigeria with nigeria's funds and all that so i don't know how that example will come but it's unfortunate we cannot continue from this point yeah. we would like to draw the curtain here on this segment we always wish we had more time to talk on the uh, headlines on our papers but we'd like to thank you architect for coming on the show this morning thank you thanks so much mm. so we are looking awesome this morning uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. nigeria won so why, why wouldn't we look <laughs> so awesome? we're looking bright <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you so much <laughs> yes <laughs> All, All right. right, we've been speaking to Ezekiel Inya Etok, and he's a public affairs analyst, but he was joining us from Abuja. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topics, so please stay with us. <laughs> 